I'm here. I'm running on coffee and Christmas cheer, so I hope you guys are too. <laughs> It's Saturday morning. Jason and I already hit up our shoulder workout. We decided to take Bruce Wayne with us in the downtown Syracuse area to see the Christmas tree. The snow's falling. It's so Christmassy. And we're gonna head over to a new bagel place and try that out to get in something delicious post-workout and see where the day takes us. No joke. This is like the fourth time somebody said in 10 minutes how beautiful Bruce is. And somebody even had to roll down their window and tell us how beautiful Bruce was. Trying out Water Street Bagel Company. And I got myself a honey wheat bagel with local raspberry jam. That looks so good. I'm out of breath from running. <laughs> and why are you running? I fucked up Jason's bagel. I asked for a plain toasted. They interpreted that as plain cream cheese. They always fuck up my shit. I should have just said no cream cheese. Like I should have. So yesterday I posted on my Instagram a couple bottles of wine that I purchased and I posted a photo with the 19 crimes. I got the Banisher dark red wine and everyone asked me if I downloaded the app and had my label talk to me. Like, I don't know how many messages I got. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So I just downloaded the 19 Crimes app, and this is really freaking cool. I'm actually glad I did it, and I wanted to show you guys, because I think it's so cool. So, the bottle's like cool as shit anyways. And I threw out my cork bottle, so it's just a little numb foil, but. Get it, James. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. So if you didn't know that and you're a white, you're a red wine drinker and you like the 19 crimes, download that app. Yesterday, I didn't get a ton of vlog footage, but Jason and I ended up going to what was called the Festival of Trees. It was in downtown Syracuse at Everson Museum, which I had never been in before, but there was a ton of different like Christmas trees that I guess people or like different groups like Girl Scout troops did them and like had different themes to them. So those were fun. We went and just kind of looked around. Santa Claus was there and just kind of did like a little Christmassy museum trip. But I had an earache, so we ended up like going home and I didn't get much else for footage yesterday. Right now, Jason and I are out doing a couple errands. We're gonna go into Best Buy to see if we can buy some Christmas DVDs and then uh, 
head to Trader Joe's for some food to do some meal prep. I'm about to get my lunch prepared for work tomorrow and I really wanna share with you what I'm making because not only is it super easy to throw together, but it's been something that has just been like hitting the spot for me. And I'm gonna be honest, I struggle to find set meals that I can eat every single day and feel satisfied from them. Like I'm just one of those people where I get really bored, like I wanna eat something totally different every day. I have absolutely no set routine when it comes to my food. But this salad, I've been sticking with it for like two weeks now and it just always hits the spot. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. I'm here, I'm running on coffee and Christmas cheer, so I hope you guys are too. Um, so very simply to get started, I find it super important to have a really good bowl for salads. Like I can't have too small of a bowl, it's gotta be the right size where I can like shake it and like get all the taste and flavors and different components of the salad like mixed in. So preferably if I'm eating a salad at home, I use like a giant mixing bowl. So that's just me. Most of the stuff is coming from Trader Joe's but doesn't have to. But the base of the salad, which I love, is their Trader Joe's Cruciferous Crunch, which is kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, green cabbage, and red cabbage. So holla to your gassy, cruciferous veg up in here. However, I don't find that this gets me like super bloated or gassy or anything. And sometimes I do struggle with the Brussels sprouts, but maybe because it's like already shredded up a bit, I don't struggle with it as much. So a uh, really great source of nutrition in terms of vitamin A and vitamin C. Um, you're gonna be getting some iron in here with your dark leafy greens. We're also getting some fiber in here, just really good stuff. This is such an easy way to up your vegetables, which we don't eat enough of. So I'm gonna dump this in here. I'm not measuring it. I don't I don't weigh measure salads. I just don't do that. So I'm gonna get a good amount in here. I should probably just use the rest. I do this thing where like I leave like a baby size amount and then no one eats it and it goes bad. So let's just not waste food for once, Kara. And use it all. Okay, so you could stop there with your lettuces, but I found these little Belgian endives, which are a member of the chicory family. It's a crisp texture and a sweet, nutty flavor, which I mean, that just sounds uh, phenomenal. So I've got one of these guys. Basically what I've been doing is taking one of those and just like cutting it up to add like a little crispity crunch into my already crunchy cruciferous veg. I don't know, I just like the different types of lettuces too. And since we don't really have any lettuce in here, this just gives us like another variety in there. For additional veggies, I'm gonna add in three, oh, I don't have the bag over here, but just three of like the little mini bell peppers. I like to have these on hand. They're sweet and crunchy. So I'm just gonna cut those up in there. So we're getting all kinds of veggies with this. and my knife sucks, so hopefully I don't cut my fingers off. The other thing I've been buying from Trader Joe's, I threw out the container, but they have these already ready baby beets, so I usually take one or two of those, and I feel like people are either hit or mess on beets. Like, you either think they taste like dirt, or you love them. Um, I don't know, I, I don't love them necessarily, but I think in the right combination of other stuff, they taste so good. So I like to have beets with goat cheese. That's just like a super tasty combination. But I kind of like the flavor differentiation the beets add to the salad. It's actually kind of a, a big baby beet. I'll just sprinkle those up in there. And then part of the essence of the salad, and I'm sorry it looks a little sloppy right now is the cranberry goat cheese from Trader Joe's. So good. This is a must have. It's just, I'm going to take this hunk here, which is probably like two ounces. It's just so delicious because you get that like soft goat cheese, but then you get the sweetness from the cranberries. And I'm just going to kind of cut this up a little bit, sprinkle it in the salad. And let me tell you the way it mixes with the beets and everything else. So delish. That's pretty much the bulk of the salad. I usually do bring an avocado with me to top 
that off, but I'm not gonna add that right now. Um, this is something new I found at Wegmans, actually, the orange ginger carrots. These are fermented, so any of your fermented food products are gonna be great for gut health. So I'm gonna add a little scooper of these in there. So the ginger in the fermentation, it's not very sweet, just so you know, for being carrots, sometimes we think of them as being sweet. Not so sweet, but good for us. So we're gonna add that in there too. I'm just gonna plop it down on the side. I do like to add protein to my salad as well. Not always, but for this, this is gonna be like my full on lunch. So what I usually have in the fridge is some already made turkey burgers or chicken. Jason's really good about having like our meats already made up in the fridge, which is super handy. And especially for meats to make it quicker for you guys. One of my tips is if you don't have an air fryer, that's what's coming super handy for us. Um, the air fryer back there. We'll just throw like four patties of like turkey burger in there. You can do chicken in there, whatever meat you want. Um, I've even done salmon in there and it turns out really good. The beauty of it is you can just walk away, you know, where the stove top and I guess you can in the oven too. But something about the air fryer just gives it a better texture. So anywho, that's my plug on air fryers. Not sponsored. But this turkey burger, I'm just gonna leave it in a separate container because there's something about like me sitting on my vegetables all night. Like, I don't know, I don't like it. It weirds me out. Like I'd rather just bring two separate Tupperwares to work and then crumble my turkey burger on after. So, and lastly for my salad, because your girl is not gonna eat a dry salad. I'm not about that life. My favorite dressing is the champagne pear vinaigrette. This pairs so perfectly with the cruciferous crunch. And I am someone that constantly buys salad dressings and never finishes them. Uh, the proof is in my fridge. They either expire or I don't finish them. This is like the one dressing I always finish because it just tastes so good. Um, nutritionally on it, two and a half grams of fat, six carb, um, five of that being sugar grams. So not too bad. And like I said, just tastes so good with this combination. So I'm not going to slather that on either. You could if you want, because kale actually is great when you like massage your dressing into it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it crunchy, but here is my finished product. My delicious salad. Cannot tell you guys enough. This has been like a game changer for me in terms of like just wanting to feel like full and satisfied and also like have like a good bang for my buck in one meal. I'm getting so much nutrition from this. I'm getting a lot of variety and I do feel really satisfied, which is super important this time of year when you're trying to balance it all out between all the little sweets and snacks and things that are around for the holidays, which kind of brings me to another thing I wanted to discuss with one of my other favorite meals to show you guys that I've been doing lately. So that was like a super healthy meal, right? One of my other other favorites has been making nachos at home, which I know it might sound like, well, nachos aren't healthy. Like, why would you suggest that as a great meal? Because it can be a great meal. And really, you can make any food fit. That's just my approach to food and nutrition. Um, but my favorite thing with nachos, they really can be a great meal. I found these at Wegmans. I'm not gonna act like I know how to say that, but they're essentially just blue corn tortilla chips. Here are the macros if you happen to care. They're like a thinner, crispier Mexican style chip. So because they're thinner, like weight wise, I feel like they go a lot further. But I've been loving these and I'll do a big plate, like a couple servings of those with some of the Trader Joe's light shredded cheese here, which macros on that are great for the cheese. And then I'll top it with like a, just a basic salsa like this and then add any other toppings to it that I love. Like if I need more protein, I might like sprinkle some turkey burger on it or shredded chicken. You could add some other vegetables to it to kind of like bump up your veggies. But you can really make nachos a healthy meal at home if you want, which brings me to like discussing kind of balancing that stuff out because you can certainly go to a restaurant and have a big ass plate of nachos. And I'm all for that if that's what you're like really craving and you need it. But what you need to know is there are ways to meet your cravings at home or on the go and not totally throw in the towel and, and go too overboard because we have to kind of find that balance of like how frequently we're giving 
not giving into our cravings, but how frequently we were having those types of meals versus kind of creating a healthier alternative at home. And that's something that's worked just really well for me with my cut this past year, with kind of like moving into like my maintenance phase that I've now been in for several months, just like finding foods that really satisfy me and also knowing that there's no foods that are off limits and kind of getting more into that approach that like, okay, if I want to eat a cookie today, I can eat a cookie today. I can eat a cookie tomorrow too. It doesn't it doesn't mean that I have to eat all the cookies today because tomorrow restarts the diet. So kind of breaking that diet mentality a bit, which I never had considered myself having the diet mentality, but really being in bodybuilding preps, you do get into that all or nothing because it kind of does have to be black and white. Like you either didn't do your day 100% or you did like it becomes black and white so some of that behavior i had to kind of rewire in my mind um, to really have a successful maintenance stage um, and just finding things that i really enjoy and satisfy me which some days are like a three pound like bomb salad with all the different flavors in it that just really satisfy me because there's just so much good nutrition and flavor and texture and that really that gets me when I've got that like sweet spot combo and then other days or like most days of the week lately I've been allowing myself to have nachos at 9 p.m. on the couch in my sweatpants with no guilt or shame because there's nothing wrong with that you guys so um you know, you just have to kind of figure out what foods you love, what you enjoy, and remind yourself that nothing has to be off limits. You have to get yourself away from, you know, certain foods are good or bad or off limits. And I think most dietitians can agree on that approach that any food can fit a healthy diet, you know? So be kind to yourself. The holiday season is here. We are in the thick of it. There's holiday parties, there's cookie trays around, there's candy canes, there's all kinds of stuff. And it's okay to allow yourself to indulge. You should, but just remember to also make sure you're getting in some other healthy foods that satisfy you as well. And for those of you who are still working towards your weight loss goals this time of year, be patient with yourself. It is, it is a challenge. It's a challenge just to maintain your weight this time of year. So remember that and give yourself a little grace with that. Um, but also don't be too complacent where you're not getting in some healthy foods as well. I do want to discuss more because I had a few questions in my Q&A that went up earlier this week. A bunch of people had asked me about my approach to my maintenance phase and how I've been able to maintain. Like, I don't know, I'm surprised people have noticed, but like a lot of people have given me props. Like it's so like, I'm really proud of you. Like how have you gone about like maintaining so effortlessly? So if you guys want to see that in a future video, let me know and I'll be glad to film that for you guys. Um, I hope you guys try out my bomb salad lunch. I think you'll really enjoy it. And comment below what your favorite like go-to food is that just hits the spot for you every time, guilt-free. I wanna know below. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and we'll see you in the next one.